Hello and welcome to an absolutely beautiful mid-April afternoon here in equally beautiful Nova Scotia. Welcome to my channel, The Optimistic Gardener. My name is Stephen Farley. I am The Optimistic Gardener. As I say, a beautiful day here in uh, Nova Scotia today. It's about 10, 12 degrees, which is quite warm for this time of year. Still getting down to, to zero quite a few nights two degrees sometimes just below zero but I thought and as you can see behind me it's all a bit bare a bit brown the old veg patch and the only thing really that's green in the veg patch at the moment is the, the garlic over there that's coming through nicely now as you can see coming up nicely I've got the uh, red Russian and music are the two types of garlic I've got there and uh, you can see the gray the grayish looking mulch is actually seaweed which is a uh, been really good just doesn't look the greatest in the world but I want to change the brown look of my of my veg patch or this this side of the veg patch anyway and get some cool weather greens in I've got a few different things I want to plant I've got some nice broccolini broccolini artwork um, that I want to get in the ground um, and I've got some spinach also got some onions and sort of spring onions, bunching onions down there that I want to get in as well. It's early in the season and actually quite often here in Nova Scotia we've got snow on the ground at this time of year. Uh, but I'm not too bothered about that. The, the next uh, week or so's forecast seems to be quite good and once I get them in the ground, broccoli, spinach, all your greens don't really mind a bit of cold. Obviously they don't like going, I've said this before, they don't like going into cold ground, but we've had some nice warm days and they've all, all of my beds have got a nice bit of mulch on them, so it keeps them nice and warm underneath and they don't mind it cool. So I'm going to get them in the ground now, rather than hang, having them hanging about in, in trays, let's get them in the ground and I could put some fleece over them if it starts to get a bit, a bit chilly and that'll keep them nice and warm on the on the chilly evenings but underneath their roots are going to be able to to get to work and really start establishing for, for when it warms up and they can really get themselves going so why don't we uh, start start with a bit of broccoli i think okay so we're starting with the broccoli or broccolini this is broccolini artwork this is a lovely um broccolini lots of rather than your sort of one big main head lots of little florets beautiful tasting broccoli i think it's always good value for money and really produces more than that that one sort of big head lots of little little goes around uh, very good broccolini indeed right so i've got this bed here just prepared it as normal this um i put a mulch down it's a bit of a rough not completely finished compost but it will do the job and i've got a nice you know put a nice mulch on there the uh, all the the animals will, will bring all the goodness down into the soil over the season and it will provide some nice shade from, for the sun, for the roots of the plants and also will keep the weeds down. So mulches, brilliant stuff all around. I'm a no-dig gardener for those of you who don't know and what that means is um, I, I want to disturb the soil as little as possible so that, that um, I'm going to let the soil do all the, all the goodness that it does um, without disturbing it really um, so all I'm going to do nothing particularly complicated in this is make a little hole grab out my broccolini these are only small you know there's nothing they're not I can't remember I, I think I sowed the seeds originally in mid-February and all I'm going to do so I'm going to leave them about we have about three across I think one yeah about right as you can see not particularly big I've got some of them that are bigger but they'll soon get themselves going no I think I might do four across just going to drop them in firm the soil around them one more so 
There you go, as you can see, nice and easy. Right, I'm gonna get on with these. Don't wanna take up the whole video with uh, showing you the same old thing again. Let's do one more for luck, shall we? Same gap in between, drop it in. Job's a good one. Right, I'll get on with this and I'll come back to you. So, it might be springtime. There might be still lots of rain on the forecast, but always good to give your new plants a good watering in. And even though actually underneath, this is quite dry on top, but underneath, this is really nice and moist. So that's that other really good thing that your, your mulch does. It really provides a nice bit of shade and locks in the moisture to the soil. So I'm always gonna recommend that. Um, yeah, give them a good water. So there we go, that is the broccoli done. Like I said, cool night still ahead. So it's a good idea, I think I'll just put, get the fleece and I'll show you that at the end and I'll just put that over them um, and they'll still get enough light, but it'll keep them nice and tucked in, nice and warm on these cold nights, just while they're bedding their, their roots in. Let's have a look at the spinach, shall we? So we have a nice bit of spinach next. For some reason, I always have a, a bit of trouble with spinach, but um, this stuff has germinated nicely and it looks lovely, nice and healthy there, coming on nicely. So I'm putting them in this bed, and this bed, it's only got uh, what's left of the leaf mould mulch that I put on last autumn, but I'm going to put some nice compost mulch in once these have, have got a bit bigger they're a bit flat at the moment i don't want them to to be all covered up by the mulch so i'm just gonna get them in there anyway just the same as the broccoli really dig them out nicely that's two there and that's a nice looking looking plant there and it's and that's a good thing with no dig it's literally a quick hole in it goes so again, I think I'm going to do these four across. Should give them plenty of room, maybe even five. And like with the broccoli, spinach is a cool season plant. So it doesn't mind a little bit of frost. Doesn't want to be completely cool all the time, but now, you know, these cooler temperatures now, definitely doesn't mind them at all. Likes to be nice and moist. One, two, three, four. I might squeeze five in at the end. That's in. What I think I'll do is I'll go across and then I'll see whether I need to put five in. As I said, often at this time of year in Nova Scotia, we have snow still on the ground so this has been a very pleasant spring for me the one thing i found um when i moved over from the uk was obviously the late spring here in nova scotia and then it's a mad rush from like late april early may to get all my things done that i need to do you know when the ground is is workable frost has come out of the ground before those pesky black flies come and uh, make the rest of um, late spring and early summer completely miserable in the garden. And I say that, completely miserable. But they soon go, as soon as the heat comes in Nova Scotia, as soon as the, the, the hot weather comes, they all disappear and then the mosquitoes come. But they're actually, funnily enough, not as bad as 
the black fly, which swarm you. Anyway, let me finish this off. I don't want to bore you with my conversation all the, all the time. Uh, and I'll be back with you in a minute. Right, so that's the spinach done, nice and easy. I've uh, actually put them all in there. Oh, bar a couple. So uh, the spinach and the broccoli over there, I'm going, as you can see, one bed, traditional monoculture. But I'm also saving a couple for the bed over on the other side by my greenhouse that I'm using as a sort of kitchen garden bed where you can, you know, a bit of a polyculture where I'm growing lots of different vegetables all in one bed um, just to show you that you can do that nice and easily. Um, the only trouble with that, with things like your brassicas, is it's a bit more difficult to, you know, if I've got lots of different vegetables growing, it's a bit more difficult to net the, the brassicas, your, uh, kale, arugula, um, the broccoli, etc., and keeping the, the cabbage white butterfly off them. But it's also good in a different way because um, you've got all your veg in one sort of bed and the different smells, etc., the companion planting, that's a, a good way of doing it. But So that's why I'm keeping a few of these just uh, there, as you can see, planting in that bed. Right, onions, last one. Let's get the onions in. That's, uh, that's just about it for the cool weather stuff. I've got. Oh no, I've got loads of kale to do, but I won't be doing that today. Let's go and have a look at the onion bed, shall we? We're on the other side by the, uh, the lower greenhouse. Okay, last, but definitely not least, are these onions. They are Tropiana Lunga. I've never grown them before, but uh, I think they're a red onion. So, planted these from seed again, mid-February type thing, and I planted them in, uh, in groups, multi-sown them, as, uh, as they say. Not all of them have come through, but uh, quite a few, so I've planted them in sort of threes to fives together, and they'll, they'll grow together, and as they get bigger, they'll sort of push each other out, and should get, you know, you don't get massive, great big onions, but I've got good sized ones, as you can see from the picture, I grew them uh, multi sown last year as well. So it's simply a matter of, I always find this bit a bit tricky for these young ones. Yeah. So that didn't work. But, ah, and this bed has um, some well rotted manure in there. So all I'm going to do is stick my fingers in. Put these in and hopefully they'll be all right. Right, let's have a look at this next one. Maybe I need to leave them a bit longer. Trouble is, I sowed them in um, leaf mould and that's only got so much goodness in there. Yeah, I'm having, I'm having a bit of a mare. Anyway, there's a good root system there, that's for sure. Right, I'm going to sow them in rows of two, really. Give them a bit of spacing. So, irrespective of being a YouTuber, we're not experts at everything, <laughs> as you can see. So anyone, any thoughts? I had the same problem last year and it's probably the same thing. I probably need to leave them a bit longer. You, is that what you reckon? Leave them a bit longer? We'll see. Just be more careful getting it out. Aha, that one's better. Ish. go that one went in all right so I will be growing I will be buying some sets as well which are obviously the more mature onions these are from seed it'll take a bit longer but it's surprising how quick they grow once they get going right 
I'll carry on making a mess of this and I'll come back to you in a minute. So, all finished. I haven't watered them in yet, but uh, I'm going to have to say that wasn't my most elegant of planting sessions I've ever, I've ever done. They're tough old plants though, onions, so um, they will be, they will, I've no doubt they'll be okay. They were okay last year, I had the same sort of problem. But um, I think I'm going to leave you a little bit longer for these bunching onions I've got, even though they look a bit firm. I'm going to leave them a little bit longer, I think, before I plant them. We'll see if that is the uh, the problem. But these onions will soon bulk out and get going once the once the, the sun keeps shining on them. And like I said, like the broccoli and the and the kale and the spinach that I, I planted today, these are, you know, don't mind a little bit of cold. Don't mind it going below and freezing even. But if if it does come about like that, I'm going to uh, put some fleece over them in the evenings just to keep them nice and warm tuck them up and uh, and they'll respond accordingly and then within a couple of weeks time it will be staying above freezing all the time and and i won't have to worry but i'm going to water these in now and uh job sort of a good one see you later <laughs> 